three key generations in the city of Toronto, one in a rep and rep proudly. The time when Spike Lee was like the king, Quentin Tarantino was wearing it. It was at the right time, it was a, uh, it was a resurgence of black consciousness and self-awareness. I was fortunate enough to uh, grow up in the, uh, in the neighborhood that they opened their shop up. I think the legacy still has potential to just continue to grow. And I think it's going to be one where it was like always rooted in Toronto, but it was also a big deal when they got their flagship store in New York and you were proud to be from Toronto when that was happening as well. The odd American would come in. Oh, we drove in from Detroit. We drove in from Buffalo just to get gear. I, I can always sort of remember walking up there and seeing the small, very sort of, you know, minimalist shop. Artists would be like, holy, this, there's this shirt company in Canada making these, these dope shirts. We got to get in on this. The leaders of the new school, the ice cubes. Every artist, every celebrity would come by and sign the wall. It was a destination spot. Back then, I had the advance of the Red Man album. And of course, I brought it down to the shop and we were running that CD in the shop all day. And Ice Cube and his crew come in shopping and we're playing the new Red Man album. And he was like, what is this? And we're like, it's the new Red Man. He goes, how did you get it? I, re I remember that. And he sat down and he listened to the whole album. Two black guys. It said everything you wanted it to say. I thought it was innovative. Um, and, you know, and of course, it was just aligned with some of my favorite groups, if not just the music that I was listening to at the time. For a brand to be around for 25 years is incredible, especially when it's an entrepreneurial, small, like grassroots startup. 25 years is no joke. It just connected at a global scale and also a place of being black in Toronto, being black everywhere.